Hi, my name is Magda and I'm working as a 3D vehicle artist at Rivet Games and today I'll be showing you the work and development that the vehicle team put in modelling and texturing the 484 Island Line train. This particular train was made from scratch for TSW. It's a converted tube train. I hope the player will notice the level of detail that we maintained throughout the train while, while we worked on it, especially uh, in the bogey area. We made sure to like in add every single detail and every single screw is placed exactly correctly and every pipe. So we spent time, some time adding detail to this curtain that uh, protects the gangway from the passengers and to make sure that health and safety is maintained. We added a good level of detail even on the interior side of it so that if you could see it from the gangways uh, you'd be able to see this nice elastic that keeps the whole thing together. We made sure to maintain a high level of detail on the roof and this uh, required us to add some details in the actual model rather than just in texture. Uh, for example, this uh, we added by modelling the Sikaflex tape on the roof and other, so other details, for example this vent and we also added in the whistle and the destination board area and the headlights. And we put all of this attention within the model itself as adding these details within the model actually look better with it in game than if we just did this uh, in texture. With the cab, we tried to maintain the same level of, uh, of detail as we did for the exteriors, uh, adding in every single screw and bolt. As you can see from the rigging and from the quantity of bones, it's quite quite dense with, with the functions. Everything that's rigged equals functionality, which uh, was then implemented by the software engineers. In fact, even the seat itself has the option to be lowered or brought up accordingly to the height of the driver. The way that we model is that we section off different parts of the train. So we usually have someone working on the interior, someone working on the cab and someone working on the exterior. So first we make sure that the, the exterior is modeled and then we will then start modeling on the interior and the cab respectfully. And we then do adjustments uh, by bringing each other's models in each other's blender files so that we know that we're we're not going over so for example if I go into my interior file uh, I have the exterior model in and I have the cab model in and these will match perfectly so when we bring them in within the game there won't be any overlapping and everything will like fit in together like a puzzle for example and this is uh, precise to the millimeter because in fact if the cab door belongs to the cab and was modelled with the cab but it fits perfectly within the interior model as well and they, we had to do quite a few adjustments to make sure that everything was matched the reference and each other's models. The way we model the trains in general is we'll have we'll, we'll model one static mesh and then we'll model an animated mesh and the animated stuff will be rigged and uh, is a separate piece to itself. So as you can see, the keys and the guard panel flap on the animated mesh. And this then, we add either bones or animations as well, if the animation is too complicated to do within the engine. And then we give that to the engineers and then they animate it or they, give, uh, they assign the animation to the pieces so that it makes sense within the game. This is the interior also the level of detail that we put in and we made sure that every screw and every little decal was uh, was placed correctly and matched the, the, the reference. If you're wondering what these colourful rainbow textures are about, they are a grid that is used to make sure that your UVs are flattened out correctly and uh, there are no issues with the UVs. I, I use this grid so that uh, so when I unwrap my models I then can s uh, make sure that I can then see if there are any issues within the model itself because we don't want any warping or anything so when UVing I'll, I'll probably use this grid on everything and the textures that you can see right now 
on everything else within the model are my bakes so that when I do my baking in substance, I can then determine whether there are any baking errors or mistakes that I want to correct or that I need to like modify in some way. If, if something was unwrapped incorrectly, like you'd see this. Obviously that's a massive problem and that would never happen, but sometimes there are little problems that happen when you unwrap. And if you put th that grid up, you will be able to see that everything is perfectly squared. Uh, and then what we do for the interiors is that we will then put a tileable material that will then use the ambience so that everything will look like it was textured uniquely, but it isn't. It's using a tileable and then we overlap the bake that gives like different the, the actual shades of each specific piece. And then that will give a little bit more uniqueness to each piece, even though you're just using a tileable texture. The reason why I haven't overlapped, like I haven't taken this grid off on this material is because this is the glass material and I didn't need to see the glass within Blender. If you're also wondering why there are no seats within the interiors, it's because we actually export the model without the seats in them, as we prefer to instance the, the seats in game. We obviously do place the seats within the model, as you can see, to make sure that they fit in within the within the model itself uh, and everything is placed correctly. But then we hide them and export the model without them and we bring just in individual seats in game and instance them throughout the train interior. This leads to a positive impact on the train's overall performance as there are less draw calls uh, and yeah, improve the quality of the train for the for the player. Let's now move over to texturing and this is the substance file for the exterior model. Uh, as you can see, we tried to maintain a good level of detail within texturing as well. This is a fictitious livery that we designed ourselves, which doesn't match the original livery for which we did not have licensing for. However, we tried to maintain a realistic look and I believe it, we did a great job. From the undercarriage, we, you can also see that the detail is quite high and we try to add every single feature and interesting feature of, of the train. As I mentioned earlier, a nice little feature is this little curtain in between the gangways and the rope that keeps it all together and the chicka flex that's on top of the train with a white but dirty texture. This is the interior, interior texture file. The interiors are made mainly with tileable textures and these are uh, used for the floor, the ceiling and uh, the walls. The floors are done within Designer for which we made a specific texture ourselves so that we could uh, bring that in within the game and have a prettier, more detailed floor interior. Everything else, the metals, the poles, and like small little things such as such as the ceiling cameras and the destination boards and the uh, decals and metal plates and all those little th items like that are made uniquely on in their own texture map. And if we quickly want to hop over and see how it looks uh, in engine, we can admire the whole process coming together in Unreal. As you can see, the textures for the floor made with a tileable, the livery, and inside of Unreal, we also add this normal detail to the exterior of the train, which um, adds a nice touch to the overall texture and makes it look more realistic and, and comes off quite nicely with the game lighting and environment. As I spoke to you earlier, we added key functionalities within this game so when for example opening the the guard panel you will see the key appear to open it and you will need the key to switch it on and you can also see how the software engineers implemented the emissive maps so as to function when opening and closing the doors and another nice detail that we added in this train are the posters. We recreated the network images by taking uh, in-game pictures uh, in the train rather than using 
stock pictures just to add that little detail. So that was an overview of the art, vehicle art for uh, the 484 New Island Line train. Hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe to see more videos. Mm -hmm.